In this video, I want to show you three different ways that you can combine your monthly data in Power BI. I'm going to show you how you can do it from a local file folder, from a SharePoint file folder, and also from a SharePoint file folder using data flows. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So here I want to show you a scenario that I prepared for you today. I have these three Excel files and if I just open one of them, it just contains sales for different months of the year. So this one, for example, it gives us data for uh, August 1996. And for each of those folders, we have uh, the same format of data. So you will find four different columns as well, order ID, order date, quantity, unit price, except for different months. So the month is August, but also we have uh, September and October data. We're asked to combine these files into one Power BI report and do analysis on them. Not only that, the solution must ensure that the business can add new months of data easily to this report uh, whenever it's available. Now, the quickest way to achieve this is actually through Power BI Desktop. So the first thing you need to do is go to Power BI Desktop. You need to get data, click more. You will need to get data from a folder. Now we'll need to just browse to that folder. I know that it is the sales folder from my desktop. If we hit OK, from here we just say combine and load. You just uh, use a sample file. So we want to use the first file um, and hit OK. And that's really it for this uh, first way to import that data. So you'll see what it's done is it's imported here a one query, a one table that has four, actually five columns now, uh, which combines all of those three files that we have in our sales folder. And if we just visualize how this table looks like, we go to the sales table here. So you'll see that it's created a new column here called source name, which essentially just shows which file that data came from. So you'll see it came from October, August and September respectively. So pretty easy, right? And if we go to transform data to just peek at what's happening in the back end, so you'll see it's created a lot of helper queries that converts and combines the tables for us without having to you know, do it ourselves. And if you remember, since we pointed it to a folder, the sales folder, all it does in this uh, Power BI transformation query is to convert and combine all the files in that folder. It means that if you have new month data, for example, all you have to do is uh, drop it into this folder and hit the refresh button in your Power BI reports and that will update your reports automatically combining all the files in this folder. Let me show you an example. So let me take out uh, October from this folder. I'm going to go back to our Power BI report here and I'm going to drag source name just to show you what files we have in this combined table. So remember, we took out October. So if we refresh this, it should take out October. So you'll see it's uh, it's not in the folder, so it doesn't get included into our sales table. However, if we put it back, so now it's back, we hit refresh again, and you'll see it's there once more. If you're looking to create a report that allows you to easily be refreshed online, you can store your files in an online folder, say a SharePoint folder, for example. So here I've got the same files, but instead I've stored it in my SharePoint uh, site, in a folder in my SharePoint site. Uh, so all we want to do is uh, essentially do the same thing, except we need to use the SharePoint folder as our source. Now to do that first, we'll need to copy the URL here. So we're going to copy my SharePoint URL. 
I'm going to go to Power BI, get data, hit more. And from this, we're going to type folder. We'll find SharePoint folder there. We'll just connect. We'll paste the URL that we've copied. Press OK. And here we go. Here are all the files that I have currently in my SharePoint site. Uh, we won't combine all of them because it is all the files in my SharePoint sites like we did before. So we're just going to go to transform data and do some manual stuff ourselves. So here it lists out all the files that I have in my SharePoint list, as I mentioned. However, you'll see the ones that we need are in a specific folder called demos. So you will see it in the folder path here. So this is what we need to combine. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to just filter just to this folder and then we're going to do combine. So here again, um, we're going to use a sample file, which is the first one. We hit OK. And there we go. So we have the combined query uh, for all of those three files in this one query here. So the same concept applies in the SharePoint folder. As long as you put the file in that folder and you hit the refresh button in Power BI, you should be able to easily and automatically include that new data into your report. Storing sources in an online folder is my preferred way, especially for reports that require scheduled refreshes. If you want to learn more about scheduled refreshes and refreshing your reports automatically, I have a video covering these extensively. So go check them out if you haven't yet. Lastly, if you work with tons of data and you want to separate the combining of files to your reports, you can do the same steps except do it in a data flow. To use data flows, you'll need a Power BI service account. And you can create one uh, and not really need the pro license. If you don't know how to create a Power BI service account, especially if you don't have a work email, I have a video covering how to circumnavigate that so that you can create your own account. So go check out that one if you haven't yet. Anyway, if you have a Power BI service account, all you need to do is go to app.powerbi.com, go to any workspace, I need to new data flow. Here we're gonna add a new table and we're gonna say our source is from a SharePoint folder. If we hit paste here, which is the same URL as we used before, it will be the SharePoint folder. Click sign in. So we'll just sign in really quickly here. We'll hit next and then you'll see this uh, UI is sort of similar and it's pretty much exactly the same as the Power BI desktop, except that it's on the web. So from this point, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit transform data. So here again, we're going to filter this to just filter to that folder path that we need, which is just the demos folder. And then we're going to do the combine the same way that we did before. So here again, we're going to use the first file as our sample file. We hit OK. And there you go. So you now have your data in a data flow that you can use in Power BI Desktop. So how does it actually work? So let me hit Save and Close. And let's save this data flow. So we'll name this one 1996 Sales. Hit Save. And let's refresh that data flow. So let's go back here and let's wait for this refresh to complete. Okay, so now that data flow has finished refreshing, we can now use it in our Power BI desktop. So it's simply, we go to our Power BI desktop here and you click get data from Power BI data flows right here. And here we have on the demos workspace, we have the 1996 cells, which we've just created. And in there we have the query. So you simply just load that to your Power BI desktop. And there you go. And here we have the exact same data or combined data as the other methods. But the difference is if we go to under the hood. So this is the query and you'll see that it doesn't have any helper queries. So this one is from the local folder. You'll see that has applied steps here on the right. 
query one, which is coming from the SharePoint folder, also has helper steps here. Whereas the last one coming from data flows doesn't have any, because if you remember, we decoupled the combining of the files by putting that into the data flows to handle. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to combine monthly files in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.